Hey everybody, welcome to Farm Out Fridays with Greg Peterson hey. and Jake Mace. Nice. The vegan athlete, urbanfarm.org. And we are at the Urban Farm today. And this is your place. This is my place, yeah, absolutely. And dude, what's this? Well, I made a big, big, big mistake, like crucial mistake in uh -oh. my garden. Uh, I've been growing green tree collards or tree kale for like four years. Right. And I've been propagating my own babies and I yeah. had a whole lineage going. Uh huh. This last year, I let the mom plants, the mother plants, get too mature mm. and the pups are no longer viable because after about year two, uh -huh. the viability of propagating tree collard becomes harder. Got it. So um, none of my pups made it and I lost all my tree collards and I'm, mm -hmm. my lineage was, was cut. Not quite. I went to the urban farm and I remember I had given one to Greg yeah. like Dude, a year ago or so. Look at this. This is amazing. And you have the lineage. The Jake Mays lineage is still alive nice. at the urban farm. Yeah. Your tree collard, your tree kale, whatever you want to call it, yeah. is perfect age for taking off pups because these guys do not go to seed. Oh, right. They'll grow and grow and grow and then die and never put off seeds. So mm -hmm. You have to propagate them by cutting off a baby off the trunk of the mom. Got it. And you know what? We've got there that are too. lots of babies here. You want me to just cut one of them off? Yeah, so the, the mother stock is down here, and Greg's going to take one of these offshoots that's here like this one and cut it. Use my brand new pruners. And what's important to see these pruners Greg has, they're brand new and they're like razor sharp. Razor sharp, yeah. Which is really good yeah, yeah. for the pruning process, yeah. for the propagating yeah, process. Just like that, right? So now, let me show the audience here. We just Sweet. cut off a piece of tree collar, a tree kale, that's this size. Okay, and here's what I do. You could stick this in water and try to root it in water, but right. I have a better success rate rooting it in a one gallon pot full of soil. Perfect. Don't spare expense on your soil when you're doing these guys. Yeah, absolutely don't spare the expense, man. Your soil for starting these things is the most important thing. I mean, if it's an extra five bucks, do it. Do it, because this is a rare plant and this will literally grow for three years in your garden or longer. Yeah, I mean, and look at this. This is, a, this is less than a year old here. And they look the best in March. So you're survived the summer and it's already putting off some amazing yeah. edible green goodness. Nice. You can even use these as wraps. Oh, I did that the like other day with, with uh, Swiss chard. That's so cool. Nice. Same yeah. thing with this. Yeah, you I can, will. Um, you can marinate it like a salad green or you can juice it in your juicer. Cool. So now if I have your pruners, what I Absolutely. do to make sure these, what I have done personally in my experience to make mm -hmm. these work is I cut each one of these branches off like this. Watch, I'll just start cutting the branches off. But I'm not going to harm the mother stock and Greg can keep these leaves and he can eat them today for lunch. Yeah. And I cut off everything except for that middle one right there. And that middle one is the barometer of whether or not this is doing healthy or not. Right. I also take the sharp side of the pruners right here and I do a little bit of a shave. I'm, I don't want to cut too far into it. I'm just shaving a little bit of the very, very top layer of flesh off. I feel that roots will be encouraged to grow out of that. Yeah. Do you, do you agree? They will. Yeah, that absolutely helps. So now what we got is we got our one gallon pot full of really nice, healthy soil. And you've got this awesome stuff right here. What is I that? Do. This is called root tone. It's rooting powder. Uh, it's natural mm -hmm. and it, uh, it encourages root growth. And what's going to happen on this guy is where you scraped it there. It, we're going to put root tone on this face right here, put it in the dirt and, and water I'm, it. And I'm going to bury this halfway under the dirt. Yeah. So literally half of this is going to be under the ground, half of it above the ground. And it takes about a month to root. So in that month time, I keep it in the shade in a favorable climate. Yeah. Maybe even in the house in the windowsill. And windowsill would be okay. great. But I put it out in my garden under the shade of a tree mm -hmm. so it's outside. So let's hit it with the rooting hormone. Cool. see what we do. So here's what I do with this stuff. Show me. I just kind of tap it. Tap it on here like so. Come on. Gotta get some of it coming out. It looks kind of like powdered sugar. Yep. But I probably wouldn't put this on your pancakes. <laughs> yeah. Put a nice layer of it on there. It also helps if this is damp. Yeah. So you can dip it in water first. Dip it in water first. And then the rooting hormone. And then I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna put it down inside the soil there and kind of keep it straight and half of it below half of it above, and now boom, that's our new plant. Upcoming tree kale. And I could test the, the health of this plant by how well this leaf does right here. Yeah. And then in about a month, after I'm sure it's rooted, I'll transplant it into my garden. It will grow for three years, and literally these tree collars or tree kale are a specimen plant. People will literally go out of their way to take pictures with it yeah. in your garden. It's an amazing they'll, plant. They'll get to be 10 feet tall. Yeah. Yours will triple in height in the next year and a half. Nice. 
we want to encourage you guys to try to find somebody who has these. The way that I found mine is that there was a nursery in town back oh, in the right. day called Baker Nursery. Yep. They've now closed. They were there for 30 years. Yeah. And just one Monday, I wandered into the nursery. Everyone else was working. I had that day off. And they got in 30 plants from a customer. Oh, nice. And they weren't going to sell them. And I told them, hey, if you guys are interested in Tai Chi, I'll teach all of the nursery Tai Chi oh, for free nice. for half an hour nice. yeah. to give me the right to buy a few. So we did. We got the whole nursery together. We did a Tai Chi class at Baker. And that gave me the right to buy about four or five pups for five bucks a piece. Nice. And, and now you make your own. That's it. So cool. we're going to also do a question and answer today. Yep. We're going to get to the Q&A in a minute. If you guys have a question or a comment to uh, put into our Farm Out Friday segment, put it in the comments down below. Or you can email us. Greg at urbanfarm.org. And uh, go to jakemace.com and click on the email Jake button. Thanks, Jake. Thank you. Thanks for saving my lineage. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're back here for the question answer segment for today. This video is about tree kale and tree yeah, collards. Gotta love it. We've got two questions yep. that you're gonna ask me today on tree kale. Yeah, so let's start just with leafy greens in general. Leafy greens in general. So what is your favorite leafy green? You know, you've got some amazing stuff growing oh, back here. I know, here. isn't this great? Gray's got That's some it. broccoli, which has edible leaves. Oh yeah. And you've got some dinosaur kale, some collard greens, and some spicy mustard greens. Yeah. I think that I don't have one favorite. I think yeah. that when you take 10 different kinds together, yep. make a salad of all 10, that's mm -hmm. my favorite. Oh, nice. Is the potpourri. But yeah. the tree collards are very sexy. They have a special place in my heart because they do live for multiple years. Mm -hmm. They're perennial. And when you get that big giant leaf, it's very satisfying oh. to know that I grew a leaf the size of my torso. Yeah, big giant leaves. And they're, and they're delicious, yeah. especially in the winter time. The winter mm. greens always yes. taste better because yeah. the cold temperatures make them sweeter. Yeah. But I do like dinosaur kale, I think. Dino kale, love dino kale. I love dino kale. Dino kale's fun, because it, uh, if you uh, grab it, mm -hmm. you know, grab the flaps of it, and pull on the stem, start at the top, you can pull the stem right out of it. That's a great harvest method. It is. And speaking is. of that, you have a second question about harvesting. How do you go about harvesting greens? You know, because you, you could pull up the whole plant. You know, I think that you're gonna um, speak to this in a second, but. I use what's called a sustainable harvest method, mm. where I can harvest the plant mm -hmm. without killing it and it continues to live. Yeah. So the, and they actually that. call that cut and come again. Okay. So as the plant grows up, you want to harvest the leaves off and it'll keep growing up. Mm -hmm. I've had kale that'll grow two years here at the urban farm and it keeps growing up and keeps growing up and you keep harvesting it and harvesting it. Mm -hmm. I've got kale trunks on kale plants that are you know good three four feet long that's great uh, yeah so it's called cut and come again do not pull them up out of the ground I learned this lesson with uh, fennel as well mm -hmm. a few years ago I had this beautiful fennel bulb growing in my front yard and I went and I pulled it up out of the ground and when I pulled it up I realized that there was a fennel root there and on that fennel root were more fennel bulbs bulbs coming, coming and you were up. just you were just at my house and you saw I have a three-year-old fennel plant yeah that's still going exactly you know, I love that method because a lot of people, I'm vegan, vegetarian for 15 years. That's why I call myself the vegan athlete. Yeah. And a lot of my non-vegan friends like to give me a hard time and say, hey, Jake, you know, plants scream also. Oh. <laughs> and I say to them, yeah, but when I harvest an apple off the apple tree, uh -huh. the tree keeps living. Yeah. And when I harvest leaves off a, off a kale, kale plant, tree. the yeah. kale keeps living. Mm -hmm. So sustainable harvest or cut and come again. That's the best way to harvest your greens. Thanks for the Excellent. questions. Hey, you bet. And Urban Farm's looking great, Greg. Thanks. 